All right, well, you have survived chapter one, and we are ready to dive into chapter two, which I'm really excited about. So this section, we're going to be talking about uh, derivatives, just an introduction to what the derivative of a function is. And so let's begin. So I want to recall with you, if I were to write down uh, a line, let's put a line just through the origin, just um, to start with, it doesn't really matter. The point is, if I'm standing at any point on the line, you can measure how steep the line is by its slope, and that's just rise over run. Let's write this down. So the slope of lines, first off, the slope of a line is always constant. It's the same. It doesn't matter whether you're standing here or here or here. It's all the same steepness, right? You can see it. And the slope of the line, we usually use m for slope. m is rise over run. And if you want, you can think of rise as change in y over change in x. So that's with lines. And so the key question that we want to ask ourselves today is what about other functions? What about other functions? Uh, can we talk about the slope of other functions? And so let's, uh, let me just graph something here. Uh, whoops. Let's graph um, something like this. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so there's my function. I'm going to uh, clean this part up just a little bit over here. And so we'll go down. There we go. Okay, so let's pick a point. Uh, I'm going to pick a point maybe right here. And it's, I can't compute slope. I can't go uh, out and then up because it, it's different depending on how far out and how far up you go. And yet, I claim that we can all see and agree that there's a big difference between sitting here and sitting here. When you're sitting here, the slope is negative slope, and when you're sitting over here, the slope is positive slope. And so that's what I want us to sort of zoom in on, is this idea that there is still slope at a point. We can talk about that. And the idea that we're really using is a line still. I'm drawing lines on these points to be able to think about slope. And this line that we're using is called the tangent line. So let me, let me summarize some of this over to the side here in writing. So our goal is to be able to talk about, and I'll put it in quotes, the slope of a function at a point. Right? What is that? What does it mean? And so the key idea that we're already seeing is to use what we're going to call tangent lines. And I'm not going to be able to squeeze lines in. So tangent, by the way, just throw this out there. Tangent is the Latin word for touching. And that really helps see what's going on. We want a line that touches our function at one point, And then that's it. It's just barely resting on there at one point. Notice that this line is actually crossing the function down here. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the point right here. What's the slope? What's the steepness of the function here? And near, near this, this point, near this point, on a little bubble around this point, the function only touches it at that point. And so that's the tangent line. And so that's our goal in this section, is to learn how to compute a line that touches a function at one point and uh, nowhere else. And so that's going to represent for us the slope. The slope of this tangent line is, in fact, the slope of the function. That's what we mean. So again, we don't know how to talk about the slope of a function like this. What does that even mean? And the answer that we're going to pursue is the slope of the function is the slope of the associated line that touches the function once near the point that we're interested in. All right? And so to capture a line, we need a point on the line Right, which we've got. We've got that. You pick the point that you're interested in on the function, and that's also going to be on your line. And then we also need its slope. So let's go ahead and just write down so that you have it. This point on the line, we have this. And we'll just say, uh, have this. And the point that we're interested in is you pick your x value a, and then we know the y value is f of a, because the point 
on our tangent line that we're interested in is the point that it shares with the curve itself. So both of those would be examples. So it all comes down to finding the slope. How do you find the slope of the tangent line? So that's sort of the key question. Let's, uh, let's actually write that down. So how do we find the slope of a tangent line? All right, and so let's, let's actually play with this for a minute. So here's a point. You know, I can, uh, I can think about, okay, there's one possible line through this point, definitely not tangent. Here's one, not tangent. Here's one, not tangent, right? How do you find the actual tangent line, which should look something more like that? And so that's going to be the question that we pursue. How do we find the slope of the tangent line? So let's, let's review some things that we know. We know how to compute the slope of a line which passes through two different points. The slope of a line between two points, that we can do. We've been doing that for a long time. And we also know how to compute at least some, maybe not all, but some limit. That's what we spent the last chapter studying. And so putting those two things together, our key idea that we're going to use is uh, secant lines. What on earth is a secant line? Well, secant, again, is Latin for cutting. So we have the cutting line. It's going to cut the function. We're interested in the touching line, the tangent line. And this goes back to the beginning of the course when I introduced calculus, the very first video uh, I told you that calculus, in some sense, takes a problem that you don't know how to solve and it breaks it up into little pieces that you can solve and then somehow you put them all back together. And so you're going to see a, a, at least a part of that principle playing out here. I don't know how to find the tangent line. I don't know how to find the slope of a, the tangent line because I've, I've only got one point. So I'm going to pick the point that I want. Here's the point that I want. This is my x value a. And we're going to focus on this. I want the tangent line here. So everything we do is about computing this tangent line. I'm going to go for a little walk. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go this direction. You can go either direction. I'm going over here. All right. And whatever distance I travel, we're going to think about that distance is h. And so if I started at a and I traveled a distance of h, then I ended up at a plus h. And so that gives me a second point on my line. Let's go ahead and label these points. This is the point A, F of A, and this is the point A plus H, F of A plus H. And now what I want you to realize is the secant line is just the line that shoots through these two points. And uh, whoop, it's not going to work if I try to let it auto correct, if I let it auto shape here. Uh, let's try one more time. Mm, let's see here. I can do it that way, and then I bet I can. There we go. So the pink line is the secant line. It's cutting the function, right? It's not the tangent line. It's cutting. But we can at least write down the slope of the secant line. So let's do that. So the slope of the secant line is, well, it's f of a plus h minus f of a taking this y-coordinate minus this y-coordinate, subtract this x-coordinate minus this x-coordinate, which is a plus h minus a. Of course, we can simplify this, and we get f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So that's the slope of the secant line. And so now what I want you to realize is as h goes to 0, right? we went out for a walk. And now let's think about it. We want to go backwards now. Let's let this, this distance that we traveled h get smaller and smaller and smaller. As h goes to 0, what happens? Well, let's, let's draw a picture with a shorter h. Let's go here. I can play the same game and compute that particular uh, secant line. And so it's going to look something like this. And then I can go a little bit shorter, and I can go there. Right, that's a smaller h, and I go there. And the point is, you can see it. 
as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller, our secant lines are getting closer and closer and closer to the tangent line. And so as h goes to zero, let's finish this statement. As h goes to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, this is going to the slope of the tangent line. And so this uh, expression is sometimes called the difference quotient. And you may have seen that in your algebra day. Sometimes in college algebra, you're asked to compute these things, even though there's no context given. So everybody wonders, like, why? Well, why is because it has to do with calculus. So let's stop this video here, and we'll make things more formal in the next video.